In this video, we are going to be talking about what exactly the IMC is and what you can expect if you're considering doing this certification. What is going on YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. For those of you that are new here, my name is Afsal Hussain. You can find out a bit more about me through the social media links below or you can check out my website which is www.afsalhussain.com. In today's video, we are going to be discussing all things IMC, Investment Management Certificate, because a lot of you have asked me on the back of the CFA videos which are here, you mentioned that you want a bit more information or detail on IMC and so today's video is going to primarily focus on IMC, what it is, how much it costs, the different levels, what you can expect and the individuals or the people who should consider doing it. It's not for all individuals that work for an investment bank or a professional services firm and so we'll talk about who it's mainly for and when or how it could benefit you if you consider doing it early. So let's get straight into it. So the IMC, Investment Management Certificate, is basically an entry level qualification for individuals who are considering going into the investment profession in the UK. Now I'm going to link all the details and all the relevant links below in the video description so make sure you check those out. Broadly speaking it's an entry level qualification and the people that mainly do it are those working in investment management. So if you're considering going into asset management or private banking then you are likely going to have to do the IMC qualification. When you join as an analyst if you are in a client facing role so if you are in an investing role or if you're in a sales role chances are your organization is going to make you do the IMC and the reason for that is because it basically gives you a basic level understanding of investment management and you need that if you're facing clients. You need that if you're giving advice or dealing with clients in your day-to-day -day work. So the individuals who do the IMC are predominantly those in investment management and private banking careers. So if you are interested in sales and trading or in a non-front office role or if you're interested in uh, corporate finance or investment banking division then you won't need to do the IMC qualification. The IMC consists of two levels, Unit 1 and Unit 2. Unit 1 requires, they recommend 80 hours of study in order to pass it and Unit 2 requires 120 hours of recommended study in order to pass it. So that's 200 hours in total. Compare that, so two levels that require 200 hours in total. The recommended hours of study to pass level one, two or three of CFA is 300 hours each. To pass level one in IMC, it's 80 hours, and to pass level two, it's 120 hours. So in total for the IMC, is 200 hours of study time, whereas one level of CFA is 300 hours. So it just shows, puts into perspective that the CFA is huge compared to the IMC. The IMC is basic entry level exam or qualification, two exams to get you into the investment management profession. That's why I recommend if you're considering doing something that will boost your CV, especially if you want to go into asset management or private banking, do the IMC. If you are willing to foot the bill, it's a couple of hundred pounds. You can find all the details through the links below. So that will take you to the pricing, the different units, the different topics within each unit. If you do the IMC, it shows you are serious about you know going into asset management or private banking it will help you stand out it's something to put on your cv and it can definitely give the employer or the person reading your cv or application the impression that you are serious and you are dedicated to the field and hence you've gone ahead and done this qualification which will save you time when you end up joining in a graduate scheme you won't need to do that qualification and so you can just get to work straight away in terms of exam fees to enter to do unit one it's 270 pounds the exam registration fee for level two is around 290 pounds the materials are around 100 pounds each and so altogether it's going to set you back around seven eight hundred pounds in terms of pass marks they expect you to get anywhere between 60 to 70 percent in the exams to pass it and the pass rates are actually quite high so compared to CFA where around 50% or less of the individuals that take the exams pass in IMC around 60 to 80% of individuals that take the exams tend to pass. Unit 1 is 1 hour 40 minutes in the exam and Unit 2 is a bit longer it's 2 hours and 20 minutes exam time. Both tend to be heavily multiple choice focused with some 
gap fill type questions. Unit one is called investment environment and it focuses predominantly on regulation, ethics and taxation for the most part. Mm -hmm. There are 85 questions in the exam and you have one hour 40 minutes to do them all in and it's either a pass or a fail mark. Now unit one is more qualitative compared to unit two which there is more calculations and a lot more equations and mathematics involved. So unit two is called investment practice and it focuses on microeconomics, macroeconomics, economic concepts, valuing bonds. It's basically a lot more technical and calculative compared to unit one. In unit two you can also expect to dig deeper into the different asset classes, economic concepts and most importantly portfolio and investment management and how to measure investment performance. In unit two, so investment practice, you do have more time, two hours and 20 minutes as opposed to one hour and 40 minutes. And as a result, you have more questions. So it's 105 questions. And these also consist of multiple choice questions, as well as a few gap fill questions. Once again, if you're considering careers in asset management, private banking, then be sure to consider doing the IMC, especially if you're in a position where you haven't got any internships or a graduate scheme lined up because it really does show on your application, the person that's reading it, it shows them that you are serious about going into this industry, you've taken the steps to kind of consider this exam because you know if you're joining front office role within asset management or private banking that you are gonna have to do this eventually and so you've taken the initiative to kind of do it past the two levels and so you can enter the world of work and hit the ground running as opposed to spending time studying for this exam. So it just shows them that you're serious about this and it can be a good way to stand out or to help your CV stand out when it comes to applying. If you found that video useful, do leave a thumbs up, give this video a like. If you haven't already, do subscribe to the channel and if you are subscribed, make sure you turn on post notifications so you never miss an upload. If you want me to do any specific videos, leave them in the comments below. Thank you for watching. If you aren't already, do follow me on LinkedIn and Instagram and I will catch you in the next video. Peace.